on 30th December 2014, a busy Tuesday morning, a 70-year-old lady came with a peculiar complaint of seeing something floating in front of her right eye. She gave a history of cataract surgery in her right eye four years ago and this peculiar complaint for the past six months. On probing a little further, she volunteered to draw what she saw. On examination, the vision in her right eye was 1 by 60 and near vision not able to read. Slit lamp examination showed aphakia with pseudo exfoliation. The IOP was normal and fundus examination revealed a posteriorly dislocated IOL back complex. We planned a pars plana vitrectomy with IOL removal through a superior sclerocorneal tunnel with a secondary IOL implantation for this patient. Three 23 gauge vitrectomy ports were made supranasal, suprotemporal, and infrotemporally. A superior sclerocorneal tunnel is made. Core vitrectomy is done. The IOL is seen floating near the light pipe. Though it may be tempting to remove the IOL at this point, it is not advisable as that would cause undue traction on the vitreous base and iatrogenic retinal tears. Core vitrectomy is completed and the IOL back complex is seen on the retina. The IOL back complex is removed using a 23 gauge engripping forceps. Though extreme care is taken, the IOL back complex slips. But not all falls are bad. To our surprise, we now see the capsular bag floating and the IOL independent of each other. Despite the absence of an IOL, a taut capsular bag is seen. Attempt is now made to remove the capsular bag first. It is grasped with the forceps and brought into the AC. A side port entry is made and the bag is hooked on to a Sinsky to prevent it from falling while the superior sclerocorneal tunnel is opened. While removing the capsular bag, we notice a capsular tension ring within it. To remove this ring, we hook it on to the Sinsky first. We then use a dispersive viscoelastic to protect the endothelium. We then remove the ring along its contour. But we are now astonished to see this ring tangled with another ring. We slowly pull out the ring. It is a Mocker's capsular tension ring. We then repeat the entire process and gently pull out the second capsular tension ring as well. It is essential to pull out these rings gently along their contour to minimize the trauma to the intraocular structures. A double surprise indeed. Looking back retrospectively, this was probably the reason why the capsular bag was seen so well formed initially itself. We now focus our attention towards the intraocular lens. It is a hydrophilic intraocular lens. The difficulty in their removal is they are very slippery. The haptic of the lens is grasped by the forceps and brought into the anterior chamber. Here, it is again hooked on to the Sinsky and viscoelastic device is used to protect the endothelium. The lens is then removed through the superior incision. We were finally successful in removing two capsular tension rings and one intraocular lens. Our job was only half done as we still have to correct the aphakia. Our options included anterior chamber intraocular lens, iris claw lens or a scleral fixated intraocular lens. We opted for a posterior fixated iris claw lens due to its advantages of less trauma to the globe, faster surgery time and less post-operative inflammation. To implant the retropupillary iris claw lens, we need to make two side port entries diagonally opposite to each other. The anterior chamber is formed with viscoelastic device. The lens is then inserted and positioned to bring the haptics in line with the side port. 
The optic of the lens is held by a special lens holding forceps and the lens is positioned. After positioning the lens, the haptic of the lens is gently tucked under the iris. A Sinsky hook is used through the side port to gently tuck the iris onto the lens and enclavate the lens. The end point of this is noting a dimpling on the iris. The process is then repeated to enclavate the other haptic. As you can see, pseudo exfoliation is not a contraindication for the placement of iris claw lens. The end result is a stable, well centered, retropupillary placed iris claw lens. Postoperatively, we see a stable IOL. The patient's uncorrected visual acuity was 612 for distance and N36 for near vision. So the take home message is, pseudo exfoliation is a common indication for the use of capsular tension rings. Long term follow up of these patients is essential as a late dislocation of the IOL back complex is a potential complication. The retinal surgeons must have a high degree of suspicion when dealing with such cases of late IOL dislocation. The removal of the IOL must be very gentle and precise to minimize iatrogenic damage. For aphakia correction, iris claw lens is a simple and effective method and pseudo exfoliation is not a contraindication for the use of iris claw lens.